Good morning, friends. I have great pleasure in presenting you the Q3 performance of our company. At the outset, I am happy to state that the company had an excellent quarter, registering a very good performance in all critical parameters, uh, namely disbursement growth, increase in margins, profit before tax, ROTA, return on equity, and reduction in net credit losses and non-performing assets. I'll be presenting the company performance first, followed by the performance of vehicle finance, home equity, and other highlights. I will also be providing comparative data with reference to the performance of last year, last year, uh, last quarter. Comparative uh, figures with reference to Q2 of current financial year can be separately provided, and these were also mentioned in our press release released yesterday. Company performance. Aggregate disbursements for the quarter were higher at 6,761 crores compared to 4,373 crores in Q3 of last year, registering a growth of 55%. Assets under management grew by about 20% at 40,056 crores compared to 33,381 crores in Q3 of last year. Financial performance. Total income for the quarter was higher at 1,383 crores against 1,176 crores in Q3 of last year, recording a growth of about 18%. PAT for this quarter grew by about 53% and was higher at 249 crores. PBT rota for the quarter was 4.6% compared to 3.5% achieved in Q3 of last year. Return on equity moved up to 20.6% as against 15.8%. Consolidated PATs was 249 crores, grew by 53% compared to Q3 of last year. Now I move on to present the vehicle finance performance. Vehicle finance continued with a stellar performance during the quarter. Disbursements were higher at 5,607 crores compared to 3,490 crores in Q3 of last year registering a growth of 61%. This was achieved through a strong growth in HCV, mini-LCV, and used vehicles. The business recorded a PBT of 258 crores against 169 crores in Q3 of last year, recording a growth of 53%. Net income margin for the quarter was higher at 8.9% compared to 8.3%. Net credit losses were also lower at 0.8% as against 1.7% in Q3 of last year. The profit before tax rota climbed to 3.8% from 3.1% recorded a year ago. Home equity. Disbursements in home equity for the quarter were higher at 799 crores compared to 619 crores in Q3 of last year, registering a growth of about 29%. The profit before tax was maintained at 54 crores compared to 53.5 crores achieved in Q3 of last year. Uh, Non-performing assets. Both uh, GNPA and NNPA have continued to decline quarter on quarter with our aggressive collection efforts showing results. Uh, GNPA at the end of Q3 was at 3.7% compared to 4.46% at the end of Q2 with an absolute reduction of around 185 crores. Likewise, net NPA was lower at 2.34% at the end of uh, Q3 compared to 2.89% at the end of Q2. Uh, we, we, with a strong focus in this area, we expect to further improve this metric by March 2018. Capital adequacy uh, ratios at the end of Q3 was comfortable at 18.53%, Tyrone standing at 13.8%. Uh, these are the highlights. Overall, I think uh, it's been a very good all-round performance with uh, the company registering uh, improvement in uh, every area. As you know, the board also uh, recommended uh, an interim dividend uh, of 45% uh, uh, compared to 35% last year. Uh, we'll, me and my colleagues will be happy to take uh, questions and answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. 
A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. We take the first question from the line of Tavalkada from Sundra Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hey sir, congratulations on great performance. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, first, uh, on the uh, vehicle finance asset quality uh, performance, which is which has improved tremendously uh, over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, just uh, I just wanted to understand. You know, we made significant investments in our collection team, and we are also looking at uh, technological initiatives in this area. I mean, how much of the contribution uh, uh, is is from this new initiative which has led to you know sub 3% uh, uh, gross NPAs in the uh, vehicle finance portfolio and uh, uh, do you see further improvement uh, from the current levels uh? so my my colleague uh, uh, ravi will answer this point yeah. so actually uh, the new initiative is uh, on the underwriting side and collection side we actually created a model which is actually propensity to pay model wherein we, we have actually started doing some call, calling for the sort packet and segregated soft and hard. Uh, if you uh, take the uh, benefit of this uh, initiative, I can say that the entire benefit coming from the new initiative only. But also the the strategy of you know creating the you know zonal structure and also giving the authority to drive the collection to the regional business heads and area business head. So both put together, the new initiative and the org structure and the focus on collection, 70-80% time, starting from uh, even uh, from the MD side, the focus was on driving the NPA for last six, seven months, and then he has taken the charge. So all put together, it is actually given the result. Uh, would you would you say that uh, this uh, this can improve further or it it should remain around? I mean, we've seen the best basically uh, already. So never, never there is a full stop for improvement. You know, uh, generally, you know, the Q4 uh, all efforts will be made to uh, improve all metrics. Therefore, you know, going forward, I think we can improve still further. And the home equity is uh, the overall NP in home equity also will come down. We are taking a lot of steps actually. It's taking time. So we definitely hope to improve this metric. Great, sir. Just the second question was on uh, you know the MSME uh, piece where uh, you know disbursements have remained um, uh, sort of stable uh, on a quarter on quarter basis for last maybe uh, four or five quarters or even b b more. Uh, just uh, I mean your sense of what what is uh, the re I mean so while we understand GST was implemented and before that demonetization uh, also happened, uh, but overall how do you see you know uh, sort of growth in this portfolio? Um, going forward. Thanks. So yeah, I think uh, it will take some more time for uh, this sector to actually come out of the current uh, the issues. Uh, we don't expect any significant growth from our side in this segment. Right. And what what could be the NPAs that we are experiencing currently on this portfolio, the MSME portfolio? Okay. So MSME is very small. Therefore, you know, the MSME is a combination of bill discounting, uh, corporate financing, there are uh, different types of financing we have given. Uh, uh, therefore, you know, uh, it, the, to put any figure actually will not give any meaningful conclusion. Sure, sir. Just last question on the vehicle finance portfolio. So, I mean, I mean excellent performance uh, and, uh, you know, it's across the board, but uh, just, I mean, your sense of how uh, the market is uh, shaping up and, and have we gained market share in some of the segments, uh, if you could highlight, uh, that would be very helpful. So, I think, you know, we have improved our share, you know, definitely. Uh, whatever we were doing in various segments, actually, we have improved our share. Uh, because you know, industry grew by about 33 percent, and we grew uh, much more than that, you know, a very large number. But anyway, you look at—I uh, mean, counting numbers on each, and then coming to some conclusion may not be very appropriate. Suddenly, we have improved our share, and uh, uh, in, there are indications that the CV industry is in for a, a turnaround. I think you know, this year itself, probably a financial year, probably you will see uh, the earlier best numbers are, can be exceeded. So if the uh, if the growth uh, sustains, I think then we are well positioned to take advantage of that. Great, sir. I wish you all the very best. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Sunil Kutari from Unique Investment. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. 
uh my hearty congratulations for all the parameters improvement and uh, great numbers sir my question or rather than question my just uh, i want to understand is that how sustainable in a long term this uh, meme of around 9% i i'm asking about a year or two perspective so it's a billion dollar question because you know you know as you know nim is uh, uh, influenced by cost of funds on the one side and then you know uh, the the lending rates on the other side uh, both are subject to market fluctuations uh, but one must be prepared for some kind of a marginal variations you know the, the because interest rates have declined very sharply and then uh, uh, they can uh, move up a bit actually by uh, Uh, maybe 0.25% uh, or 0.2 to 0.25% and so, uh, so the the issue is actually you know how do you should there be some kind of a nim compression do you have any other levers to ensure that your profit uh, before tax or absolute returns are intact that i think we have so if there if there is going to be a small compression nim how do you uh, overcome that you know there are product mix uh, you know different products give different rota and different segments there are uh, there are some there is one pricing in south one pricing in north one pricing in east we are present uh, uh, all over pan india therefore there are different mm-hmm. levers in which you can play around uh, well difficult to predict what kind of nim whether the nim will prevail continuously for next two years but i can definitely mm-hmm. say that should there be some marginal impact in the nim we can definitely we have multiple levers to overcome that okay and uh, sir we are at a stage where i think everything is in our favor it seems to be and uh, things are very positive where you will be careful i mean where uh, i mean uh, any any complacency should not come in the minds of uh, our i mean uh, team and what type of caution at the top management you are taking not to make any mistake in a good time so this is actually you know humility and be careful and then be uh, 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 uh careful is actually is in the group's dna itself in the company's dna uh, in every area we will be exercising uh, uh, care, utmost care you know there are uh, uh, we have a very good uh, risk management uh, uh, framework in place if it comes to lending now uh, just uh, uh, just a while ago you know uh, my colleague ravi mentioned that you know we have automated this process uh, therefore Uh, in the area of lending again you know we have to ensure that uh, uh, we don't lend to the uh, uh, parties without appropriate credit uh, apart from the uh, the framework which we have put in place there are also we are also bringing in credit analytics to have another filter and um, collection we have a separate vertical therefore we constantly monitor uh, payments and then uh, uh, our teams actually go after wherever there is a, a kind of a delay so so i think you know you can be rest assured that you know we will not be complacent thank you we take the next question from the line of degant arya from antique stock broker please go ahead uh, yeah hi congratulations team uh, my question is on the uh, home equity business uh, like last quarter we saw the first signs of uh, you know business uh, you know like some turn around like you know disbursements had picked up asset quality had started stabilizing i think this quarter was flat so if you can just highlight some of the efforts that we are taking to you know get this business on uh, you know on a growth path rohit would you like to answer that my colleague rohit will answer that yeah. hi digant <coughs> see uh, digant the two things one is on the business front we need to expand into more number of branches and that's what we are doing currently into 130 i think we will go to about 200 in the next 7 uh, 8 months so on the business front uh, geographical expansion uh, is a prime uh, focus area uh, on the uh, sarfesi on the, on the recovery front uh, use of sarfesi and arbitration where we have seized a lot of properties a uh, sale has to happen to see effective reduction of gnp and that is where we are uh, focused in uh, collection for efforts at the field and sale of uh, seized properties Okay uh, so so Roy it would be safe to say that we have some credit cost levers in this business uh, going ahead or could you elaborate that yeah so so as in the the nps coming off or you know we'll have uh, you know lesser provisions in this home equity business going ahead than we had in the last 7 8 quarters obviously Rehan, that is the intent you know right right that, oh. that is the intent obviously that's the intent okay okay uh, and second question is on uh, Uh, you know on this uh, capital adequacy uh, like you know i you know if i just calculate the 
our return on equity for this quarter i think we've already exceeded 20% roes uh, so so like would we uh, you know do we have any plans to capital raise or we think that internal generation is strong enough to take us through the next one or two years so at least uh, just now i answered this point actually just next for one year at least you know uh, we have no immediate plans of raising any equity i think uh, uh, whatever growth uh, requirements for next year can be met out of uh, accruals and current uh, capital adequacy position okay okay all right thank you all the best to the team yeah, thank you thank you we take the next question from the line of parag charibala from vito capital please go ahead Uh, yeah thank you uh, rohit i have a question for you in terms of uh, uh, you know you used to give lot of data in terms of the number of property repossessed and all those i understand that uh, gnp is largely flat quarter on quarter but if you can run us through uh, you know heavy i mean added you know heavy repossessed more uh, properties this quarter or how is the trend let's say compared to uh you know three four quarters before is that trend uh, is the number of property repossessed is mean stabilizing and secondly uh, uh what is the competition outlook and third uh, if you can tell us uh, uh, basically how much more time uh, does you know normally a property repossessed takes to you know come to a final conclusion yeah please uh so see uh, we have as of now we have about 43 properties uh, are repossessed and we are okay. in the process of selling them right okay uh, so uh, so how much time does it require see if you if you take a simple uh, statutory period for selling a property uh, right from issuing a npa letter it takes anywhere about 6 to 9 months for, uh, for for the transaction to reach a auction stage hmm right so and if there is uh, any delays due to judges not being available or customers uh, uh, raising any um, uh, um, objection for sale then it will take slightly longer time okay right so we, so now what has happened is uh, since we started the surfacing process last uh, uh, november so in this period you know there are most of these properties are now reached the auction stage and obviously you know we are going to sell them and once we sell them we see a gnp mm-hmm. reduction right so does okay. that answer your question then yeah. the second thing is you ask me about competition mm-hmm. yes there is co- intense competition from both hfcs and banks uh mm-hmm. we see uh, particularly you know when because of the uh, new home loan sales getting depressed a lot of hfcs uh, have entered the lap space the banks as usual uh, you know because of uh, no corporate lending have been in this space and there is intense competition there are many new players also entering uh, entering the lap market as lap is a secured product mm. and uh, uh, just one data point the overall home loan gnpa uh, last quarter it was like 515 properties uh, is that number change this quarter yeah, i that that i that i can't tell you so that okay sure thank you thank you we take the next question from the line of nidesh chain from investec capital please go ahead mr no? jain yes please go ahead with your question yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity sir uh, in the home equity business we have seen the slight uh, reduction in the share of uh, uh, residential self occupied residential property so is there any change in strategy there or uh... no there is no change in strategy see the intent is you know what we have observed is there are lots of players in the market who are taking very aggressive ltvs on srp so if we have a customer uh, who has already pledged his srp rather than doing a balance transfer and giving him a top up if he is an external customer or giving him a top up to buff the ltv if he is an internal customer it is much safer to take his self occupied commercial property and lend him against that okay and the secondly uh, because of competition our profitability in this segment has has gone down especially on the margins Uh, so going forward what is your sense on the on the rota rota level of this uh, segment so uh, see you know the, the two things uh, which are unique uh, to chola one is you know if you look at our opex in this business our opex has always been very steady that is number one so we got a hang of managing the opex 
Secondly, on an expansion front, Chola today has uh, about 900 branches. And you know, when when we want to expand the HE business, we simply can go into these branches and start business. So both these factors, you know, will help us grow as well as uh, keep our uh, uh, pecs in control. So what will happen going forward is once delinquency cup comes back to normal, uh, the increased disbursements uh, and the distribution will still give you a good rota of 3%, PBT rota of 3% plus. PBT rota of 3% plus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the uh, on the vehicle finance, we have taken a lot of steps uh, for uh, improving our operating cost efficiency. Uh, but because we have seen, uh, I think, uh, quite aggressive branch expansion in last uh, few quarters, that has not played out. What is the uh, is there any expectation of operating leverage playing out in vehicle finance going forward? Uh, I think it should happen. You know, uh, last couple of years, as you rightly said, we have expanded our branches and. 40% of our branches are less than two years old. As volumes pick up, uh, I mean, as uh, we are quietly seeing that the CV industry has shown uh, significant uh, growth in the last two quarters, both Q2 and Q3. Uh, so once this happens, uh, definitely OPEX will come down. And so lastly, on the branch expansion plan, uh, what is the branch expansion plan going forward? So we have not uh, really finalized our plans for next financial year. So. Uh, so I will not be able to uh, say anything at this point of time. And for this year, we are broadly done with the branch expansion that we have yes, seen. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So thank you. That's it from my side. Right. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Himali Dami from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Well, I just wanted a quick uh, data point on the home equity segment. I wanted to understand the proportion of loans under 50 lakhs and the ones above 50 lakhs. Himani, I, actually, I don't have that data point. I'll give it to you later because I don't have that data point at all. Okay, so I'll drop you an email for the same. Sure. And if you could give us just a geographical color on the home equity business, which areas do you think are struggling right now? See, uh, you know, basically we see a, um, a slight higher competition and slight struggle in NCR region uh, primarily and followed by Punjab and Haryana. Those are the Key, key, two key, two areas where we see some kind of uh, increased competition or high risk. Okay. And another thing on vehicle finance business, have we taken any pricing cut to increase our market share this quarter? So, uh, vehicle finance put together actually uh, consists of three product lines, uh, commodity HCV, LCV and mini LCV. All three uh, segments have been uh, competitive because a lot of new players have come in and you know there is a competition but overall rate has actually maintained because of the product mix and there is a higher rate from the uh, high yield business and then which, uh, which can compensate what we are actually uh, you know giving it to the customer as well as the uh, HCV is concerned so net net there is a competition of rate and therefore rate has come down from all segments but we have maintained our rate because of the product mix Okay, and if you could share our increment yields? Uh, no, there is no increase in the yield. Okay. Yeah, we have maintained the uh, I mean, Q2. Q2. Okay, fine. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I would like to remind all the participants. If you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touch tone telephone. Next question is from the line of Umang Shah from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. I just had a, a question related to credit costs. So, <clears throat> so if 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 I look at the credit costs for the first nine months, we are closer to about 100 basis points blended, and we might uh, end the year at about 90 to 100 basis points. Now, this is something which is uh, probably the lowest level of credit cost that we are seeing in last 12, 13 years, barring a couple of years here and there. Um, uh, uh, now, now, uh, my 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 question is that going forward. What, according to you, is a more sustainable level of credit cost, given the fact that um, we are also at the lowest level of provision coverage that we have seen, uh, and 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 how do we see PCR as well as credit costs uh, moving forward? So actually, it's uh, very difficult to answer this question because while uh, we would uh, definitely take uh, as much efforts as possible to bring it down, 
so whatever we have achieved this quarter actually in the in terms of uh, the net credit cost i think you know is quite good uh, in spite of increasing volume and higher disbursements if you are able to uh, keep uh, the ncl at this level i think uh, uh, we will be quite happy uh, the npa resolution actually that will go on and then you know uh, as uh, uh, the uh, the rural economy improves and then you know the uh, more money is available and then we expect a better payment uh, from the customers therefore the overall npa can come down provision coverage actually you know then if you see uh, uh, you know our intent will be to take it to 40 to 45% so as the uh, npa level comes mm-hmm. down i think you know automatically uh, this will go up all right got that uh, uh, that that's quite helpful and just one data point which i wanted uh, could you help me with the uh, number of employees that we have uh, for q3 as well as for q2 sir yeah We have, we have uh, totally around 19,500 uh, employees and of uh, two, two, three, which includes both on roll and off. Yeah. Okay. And what was this number in Q2? If you could help me. 18,500. Okay. Thank you so much, and wish you all the best for future quarters. Yeah. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Vibha Batra from Fair Connect. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for taking my question. The question is on NPA movement for home equity. If you were to look at na- last nine months, um, uh, what would be a... Uh, sir, can you, uh, you, you... We lost you, actually. Hello? 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 Yeah, we, 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 can you repeat the question? Well, sir, we just lost the line for the participant. Yeah, yeah. We take the next question from the line of Shweta from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Congratulations on great set of numbers. I have two questions. So one is, uh, can you comment on the asset quality on used vehicle finance segment, especially tractors and construction equipment? Also, we don't give that breakup. We cannot share that breakup. Okay. So, but just the broader sense on how uh, asset quality has panned out, especially in these two segments? It is improving. Okay. Quarter on quarter as well. Yeah. Okay. So then secondly, uh, as far as net interest margins are concerned for vehicle finance segment, uh, the improvement has been pretty sharp. Is it the function of improved disbursements this particular quarter? No, sir. Absolute, there are there are two aspects. One is net interest margin in terms of percentage and in terms of absolute numbers. If you are referring to percentage, it has nothing to do with volumes. No, it is... Uh, it cost of what is your uh, lending rate your uh, debt minus your cost of uh, funds that gives you the name net interest margin uh, therefore you know whatever we did uh, we had recorded in q2 we have been able to maintain in this quarter going forward we have to wait and see the cost of funds uh, how it moves and also the uh, lending rates how it moves Okay. So lastly, if I may squeeze one more question. So vehicle finance as a percentage of the overall mix today stands at 72%. I remember you mentioning previous quarters, uh, this this should be coming down to 65% and that's what the target mix you're looking at. So would you like to comment again, how uh, would be your target mix panning out ahead, say one, two years down the line? So I think, you know, it's a very, we are uh, living in a very dynamic environment. So, for example, when when I mentioned to you maybe last time, we never had a plan for this uh, uh, HFC. That was at least was in the, not in the news was not in the public domain. So for now, uh, we have announced uh, the for forming of a housing finance company. Thereafter, the entire strategy will move. Actually, you know what uh, what kind of business we do in a housing finance company. All these things we need to uh, plan out. Actually, we have to plan all this and then uh, then take a call. Therefore, uh, we will not be able to answer this question at this point of time. Okay. Thank you, sir. That helps. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Harsha Toshniwal from Jefferies. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. A uh, couple of questions. So, uh, this is more of a general uh, thing which is happening in the industry. Just want to understand that is are we moving to a more safer bra- bunch of customers uh, within this vehicle finance portfolio because maybe a bit higher than what we used to do earlier uh, and that has been an impact on the asset quality improvement. So, can you throw some light on the customer segmentation which, which we ha- have right now? So, uh, first, you know, I would like to understand from you what do you mean by uh, safe customer? 
safe customer as I mean so um, when I am lending so maybe I am moving towards more uh, Sundaram or HDFC kind of customers the customers which they do and less of the the more high yielding but a greater asset co uh, risk uh, profile customers uh, so I think my colleague will answer this point yeah. see uh, our positioning we are continuing to be the, there in the bottom of the pyramid in as far as the commercial vehicle uh, which we uh, presented in the, the investor presentation and but uh, our credit analytics tool which we have started using it for two and two and a half years that actually um, select those customer wherein the probability of default is less wherein the expected loss is less so the entire credit modeling has been done based on the expected loss model wherein we our intent is to actually select those customer and the losses will be less or we have to adequately price it so that our rota is not affected if at all losses is high so in our our intent is to actually achieve higher rota by selecting best customer out of the a particular positioning we have but uh, coming to your point that we are not moving top of the pyramid wherein uh, banks are there or some of the players who are actually trying to do only the low yield or low risk product uh, we are there in our uh, we have not changed our position Okay. So I think just to supplement this, if you see our product mix, you know, we are present uh, all throughout. We are in HCV, NCV, LCV, mini LCV right. used. So therefore, you know, you know the customer profile of these uh, who own these products are different. Therefore, we continue to be lend in all these segments. Okay. So, so if I can ask this in this way that uh, has your rejection rate increased if on a broader two or three year uh, period, has your rejection rate of customers increased uh, in, in categories? So obviously the rejection rates are at two, two level, one at the sourcing at SFE level, sales executive level and then, then the underwriting level. So right. our sales executive level, lot of uh, underwriting is happening, which was not happening earlier. Earlier sales executive uh, used to collect all files, used to come to the credit manager to take the decision. Today, mm -hmm. we given them tab, so they are, they, are, they are with the help of the tab uh, doing the decision making. So without uh, putting that file, they can actually reject it then, then and there. So that on the spot rejection has gone up significantly because we have enabled them to take the decision based on the tablet. As far as the underwriting rejection, we are not taking those cases which is going to get rejected. Therefore, our rejection in the system is remain safe. Okay, so overall system, it's it's more or less a okay. And sir, in uh, home equity segment, uh, as you mentioned during the time of demonetization, that you would be focusing more on the lower tickets. Uh, segment. So, uh, are, are we still uh, there with that strategy that we would be focusing more on the smaller ticket size segment? You hey, see, uh, we were never focusing uh, too much on the large ticket size, but if you look at our average ticket size, it has come down from 50 to 40, uh, 50 to 49 lakhs. Uh, this, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. And incrementally, how much it's been happening? Incrementally, fewer uh, big tickets are happening. And it's basically uh, the uh, customers uh, taking loans in between, you know, 50 lakhs to about one and a half crores, two crores. That customer segment is uh, that loan size, loan ticket size is more. Uh, okay. Okay. And our uh, specific geographic concentration to NCR and all is reducing, or it's the same as it was earlier? The portfolio is the same, no? Portfolio is the same, incremental business. Incremental disbursement. I'm yeah, saying. but we don't intend to discontinue because see, the issue is that NCR itself accounts for I think some 7 or 8 percent of the country's GDP. Hmm. So that is a very huge uh, market as far as business is concerned. So, we, I mean, no, no, uh, I don't think anybody uh, who is in the lap market will be able to totally ignore uh, this geography. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thanks. That was helpful. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Panti Chabla from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Congratulations are on a good set of numbers. Just need some data point if it is possible. Uh, you have given that 850 on presentation slide number 12. You have given 858 branches full data point. Similar 139 home equity branches. Can you share some data how much in the specific states as equivalent to 858 you have given that data? Is it possible? So we cannot give this now in this call actually. You, you can. Okay, okay. Yeah. I can, uh, on the mail you can share with us. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, lastly, uh, on uh, you have, uh, now you have a housing finance subsidiary, right? Mm -hmm. So you have others portfolio with the home loan that will be completely shifted to that home loan subsidiary? 
because you have a 94 home loan branches already co-located with vehicle financing so i think uh, that will be the that will be the target to which we should work but uh, nothing has been formed up yet we are just uh, okay. yeah we are just working on all that okay. so uh, not be able to clearly tell you what will happen okay 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 sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you we take the next question from the line of pradhan engineer from motilal oswal securities please go ahead yeah hi sir congrats on the great results uh, my question is a follow up to parag's question on lap npls basically what i want to know is what percentage of uh, lap npl customers are currently paying their dues and the reason i'm asking this is that you know we have 600 crores of npls in this segment but we've repossessed only 43 properties so if i assume even 1 crore per property or rather per loan outstanding that's only 43 crores so how do we plan to address the remaining 550 crores of npls in this segment yeah see um uh, you see np you know now earlier what used to happen is when we were at 180 dpd calculating np was very simple just everything that is above 180 dpd is np okay. now you know there are two stages np is anything that moves above 90 dpd is also a um, uh, np any custom room moves above 90 dpd so you have this and various chunks of customers who sit between 90 and 179 and then a set of customers who are above 180 right so yeah. this entire you need not repossess the entire set of properties so about 40% of that 600 crores is eligible for surface now i don't have the exact number to give you right and this 43 crores is valued today at 75 crores not at 43 crores no but that really the value of the property right uh, i'll be more concerned with the value of the outstanding npl of that uh, npl 43 crores oh. receivable is 75 crores Okay, okay. So they were high ticket NPLs, basically. Very, very I should think of it that. And so this 180 uh, DPD ke baad uh, SARFC is that a regulatory requirement or is that your internal procedure? No, SARFC you can initiate after 90, but there are lots of customers who will keep coming in, uh, going front and coming back. So for that, you know, even if you have initiated SARFC, because the customer is paying to you, you will not suddenly go in and repossess that property. understood understood so can i assume by and large at least 60% are uh, paying uh, their money maybe sporadically but are still paying but they are still classified as npl honest i don't have the data of hand to tell you yes or no but yes there are lots of customers who are in that bucket got it got it and my uh, second and last question is for arul sir i just want to know the cost of the latest 3 uh, year or 5 year ncd that you would have raised uh just trying to get a sense of the spreads above gsec yields the latest one that you would have raised right now it is at around 8.25 8.25 okay sir thank you so much and all the best thank you we take the next question from the line of alok shah from centrum broking please go ahead uh yeah thanks for the opportunity and sorry uh, i joined in a bit late uh sir i just wanted to get a sense uh, from you in terms of uh the profit profitability of the fleet operators so uh, you know in the context of the fact that we have been hearing of uh, increase in fuel prices uh and also reduction in freight rates uh, so what's your sense there? so transporters profitability has been impacted because of the increase in diesel prices in the recent time uh, for last 2 3 months diesel prices are going up continuously at the same time there is a freight availability which has improved uh, from last quarter to this quarter or uh, first quarter to this quarter so that is what is one thing which actually helping them to manage their cash flow at the same time because of the hub and spoke model which is actually uh, come up after the gst the long haul has gone up and these guys are also there's the reason uh, going into the higher tonnage vehicle uh, because uh, if uh, Uh, one important thing is that the rated load has uh, actually enforced so the overload is not available now for the transporter that is also impacting so uh, all this re- because of these only these customers are now moving to the high tonnage customer vehicle and for transporting the goods from one uh, destination to another destination which is long uh, as compared to the past so by doing so they are managing cash flow it has impacted definitely So on a YTD basis, uh, last year versus this year, it would have improved. But uh, you know, but but for the uh, extent of increase in fuel prices, there is a reduction. Would that be a right way of looking at it? 
So what I'm saying is that the diesel prices and the rated load uh, enforcement has impacted their uh, profitability. At the same time, hub and spoke model, uh, then the distance has gone up and they, they have moved to, to load, uh, from low tonnage to high tonnage vehicle has improved their profitability. So net-net, they are actually at same level. Probably would have gone down a uh, little bit. Uh, in the recent time, but definitely what you are saying, okay. last uh, year to this year, it has improved. Sure, and maybe just one thing, you talked about uh, overload factor, is it applicable Pan India or is it still in uh, select states only? So it is uh, getting implemented uh, one by one, like uh, we we went to Rajasthan, we saw that there has been implemented, Uttar Pradesh also getting implemented. Across the country, I think it will get implemented very soon, because, uh, that is what uh, you know, government is trying to do it. State governments are putting a lot of focus on that, and therefore, and it is also good for the customer. Uh, if, uh, they they have to take the high tonnage vehicle uh, with overload, then it will actually deteriorate their vehicle faster. That is not going to work in favor of the customer as well. Sure, and maybe one data point I miss that. Uh, what's our housing portfolio in PA? Pardon? The home equity uh, portfolio in PA, the GNP number there, the percentage. Yes, in the press release is around 5.98 percent. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Equity. Yeah. Sorry, if I missed. Loan came. Home equity. Yeah. He said okay. home equity. Second. First, I uh, I'm done with my question, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Titesh Pam from Prabhudas Lilathar. Please go. Uh, thanks, sir. Uh, just wanted to get a sense on the geography state-wise vehicle the displacement and growth which is happening seems to be we moving from the north side to the eastern side of the geographies and uh, what is contributing to this growth in terms of mix and uh, what activities are contributing. We have given this mix actually. We, we, our mix is actually, our, our branch network across the country is uh, fairly uh, uh, distributed across the country. So, uh, it is not that we are doing a higher investment in a particular zone. I'll just give you zone wise. Uh, so I have the zone number. What I'm talking about is last uh, few quarters, if you see north was 30% and it's moved to 24 today and east from 22 to 27. So, and also some states like Punjab, Rajasthan. Uh, we have uh, lowered our exposure there, so uh, I wanted to get a sense what is happening on this uh, in these states and what is the activity uh, uh, for the growth purposes on, on the, in these states. So we have to see the TIV of those uh, particular states. We, we do not have any strategy to reduce any particular disbursement of any particular state. We are focused on all states in the country. And if any particular uh, TIV of uh, product is coming now, for example, we are more focused on light commercial vehicle and small commercial vehicle. And that uh, TIV in particular state has come down because of the disbursement has gone down. Or little bit uh, any particular competition would have come down for the uh, short term basis, something would have happened. But we do not have any strategy to reduce anywhere. Uh, so, uh, could I understand, is it more, uh, I think, branch is more skewed to its rural, but the EM mix also will be there on the, the rural side? Rural side, we are saying that our uh, three, four, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5 is around 85%. Rest of the branches are in the urban. The same will be for the EM as well? Yes, AUM probably, yeah, it will be similar only. It will it will become similar more uh, after one year because uh, some of the branches are new. Like uh, in two years, uh, we have opened up around uh, 300 branches. So these 300 branches will start doing disbursement in the fullest capacity in next one year, one and a half years time. That will be actually time when we'll actually achieve that also. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I would like to remind participants again, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and 1 at this time. We take the next question from the line of Saurabh Tole from Travantage Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is with respect to your gross yields, uh, they have uh, for the y for YTD period ending December 17, they've gone up to 16.8 and uh, same period last year it was 16.4 so what exactly explains this rise 
No, it's a really combination of product uh, mix. Okay, and so the product mix is uh, tilting in favor of what kind of uh, sub-product segments? No, so say LCV, mini LCV, lent to LCV, mini LCV, used, then HCV. So okay. depending upon the uh, mix at that point of time, the rates will vary. Okay, and uh, any outlook on whether this trend is expected to continue or this is where it will stabilize? So if it stabilizes at this level, it will be good because uh, beyond this, I think as I have already said, you know, uh, NIM, you know, cost of funds as well as lending rates actually have peaked at optimal points, I think. Uh, and also we are also doing volume, you know, mm -hmm. so therefore if it is maintained at this level, it will be good. Okay. And so the next question was from, uh, with reference to your slide number 43. Uh, I understand that there has been some kind of a reclassification uh, under the line item receivables under financing activity. So can you please explain if uh, what exactly is this? So, so, uh, so I think, you know, we you have to come uh, separately. Yeah, we we can can't uh, answer this now. Okay. To go through what you are asking, you have to understand and then come back. It will take time. Okay. Okay. And uh, so just uh, one last question. In one of your... Uh, uh, other answers you had mentioned that you know names vary across geographies so uh, is it possible to give some more color on that exactly what geographies give higher names vis-a-vis -vis, which ones give relatively lower names so i'll i while well, i cannot give you specific detail for example uh -huh. one product in east will give you a different yield different name actually the same product in south may give a different name okay uh, it could be difference could be 0 0.25 0 0.3 etc depends mm -hmm. on local conditions mm -hmm. So to that extent, um, all that uh, is necessary to know that, you know, there is a difference in yields across zones. Okay. I will probably stop with that. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Vipa Batra from Fair Connect. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry for the last attempt. I think my call got dropped. Uh, I don't know if you heard me. I wanted to check the... Um, NPA movement in home equity segment. So, so I think you know while uh, I don't have to go through the numbers, you know there has not been very significant movement in the NPA in home equity segment because this segment generally takes time to get all the uh, uh, NPS resolved. You know the only way which okay. NPA can be resolved is by payment or otherwise you know by uh, bringing the property to sale. While uh, effective steps for uh, bringing the property to sale at an advanced stage at various levels. Uh, so it is not really, uh, many things have not rectified. There are 80%, 85%, 90%, and things like that. So, okay, so yeah. therefore, it has taken time. Yeah. And it it that also means a fresh NPA generation is close to zero? Uh, I can't make that statement, but that is, I think, very negligible. I would say, uh, uh, I'm not, I have not checked, actually, but, you know, there, there is no, I can say that the NPA, new NPAs are far and few. Okay, okay. My next question is for Arul with the hardening in GSEC rate. Uh, uh, you know, what kind of uh, increase in funding uh, do we expect over the next six months or so? Over the next six months, the shift would be more on the CP part of the borrowing because the bulk of the longer tenor borrowings are on fixed rate and we have got uh, those things tied up for a longer period. Uh, the marginal borrowings will, of course, be at a slightly higher cost. So the sh the impact of this will be felt more over a longer period than than, than the next two quarters. Okay, but incremental cost you expect it to go up by 25, 50 basis points because your credit uh, rating is also improved. So yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, it should go up by around 25 basis points as per our guess right now. Okay, okay, thank you. That's very helpful. Thank 